Footprints Without Feet, written by H. G. Wells, is a story about a scientist who finds a rare drug and consumes it to become invisible. What will this lead to? Is the scientist working towards the betterment of society? Or is he simply working for his own benefit? Hold on, I shall answer all those questions. But before that, let's know a bit about the author. Now, Herbert George Wells, also known as H.G. Wells, was a renowned British author who is quite famous for his work in the science fiction genre, like The Time Machine and The War of the Worlds, even The Invisible Man is a novel about how science can lead to trouble if it gets isolated and unrestricted by morality. Wells, who is aptly called the father of science fiction, was born on September 21, 1866 and died on August 13, 1946. Let's read the story and find out more about the secret agent and the trouble that he had to face. Footprints Without Feet by H. G. Wells. The two boys started in surprise at the fresh muddy imprints of a pair of bare feet. What was a barefooted man doing on the steps of a house in the middle of London? And where was the man? As they gazed, a remarkable sight met their eyes. A fresh footmark appeared from nowhere. Further footprints followed, one after another, descending the steps and progressing down the street. The boys followed, fascinated, until the muddy impressions became fainter and fainter and at last disappeared altogether. The explanation of the mystery was really simple enough. The bewildered boys had been following a scientist who had just discovered how to make the human body transparent. Griffin, the scientist, had carried out experiment after experiment to prove that the human body could become invisible. Finally, he swallowed certain rare drugs and his body became as transparent as a sheet of glass, though it also remained as solid as glass. Brilliant scientist though he was, Griffin was rather a lawless person. His landlord disliked him and tried to eject him. In revenge, Griffin set fire to the house. To get away without being seen, he had to remove his clothes. Thus it was that he became a homeless wanderer without clothes, without money and quite invisible until he happened to step in some mud and left footprints as he walked. He escaped easily enough from the boys who followed his footprints in London, but his adventures were by no means over. He had chosen a bad time of the year to wander about London without clothes. It was mid-winter, the air was bitterly cold and he could not do without clothes. Instead of walking about the streets, he decided to slip into a big London store for warmth. Closing time arrived, and as soon as the doors were shut, Griffin was able to give himself the pleasure of clothing and feeding himself without regard to expense. He broke open boxes and wrappers and fitted himself out with warm clothes. Soon, with shoes, an overcoat and a wide-brimmed hat, he became a fully dressed and visible person. In the kitchen of the restaurant, he found cold meat and coffee and he followed up the meal with sweets and wine taken from the grocery store. Finally, he settled down to sleep on a pile of quilts. If only Griffin had managed to wake up in good time, all might have been well. As it was, he did not wake up until the assistants were already arriving next morning. When he saw a couple of them approaching, he panicked and began to run. They naturally gave chase. In the end, he was able to escape only by quickly taking off his newly found clothes. So once more, he found himself invisible but naked in the chill January air. This time he decided to try the stock of a theatrical company in the hope of finding not only clothes but also something that would hide the empty space above his shoulders. Shivering with cold, he hurried to Drury Lane, the centre of the theatre world. He soon found a suitable shop. He made his way, invisible, upstairs and came out a little later wearing bandages round his forehead, dark glasses 
false nose, big bushy side whiskers and a large hat. To escape without being seen, he callously attacked the shopkeeper from behind, after which he robbed him of all the money he could find. This story sounds interesting, but before we read further, let's understand this part in detail. So, the story takes off when the two boys come across fresh muddy imprints of a pair of bare feet in the middle of London. These footprints belonged to a scientist who had just discovered how to make the human body transparent. It so happened that the scientist, called Griffin, had carried out experiment after experiment to prove that the human body could become invisible. And he swallowed some rare drugs, thus becoming completely invisible. Though he was a brilliant scientist, Griffin did not follow the law. You see, Griffin had escaped after setting his landlord's house on fire. Thus it was that he became a homeless wanderer without clothes, without money and quite invisible until he happened to step in some mud and left footprints as he walked. Now Griffin had chosen the midwinter to wander about London without clothes. So naturally, the air was bitterly cold and he could not do without clothes. So he decided to slip into a big London store for warmth. As soon as the doors were shut, Griffin found enough clothing and food for himself without having to spend any money. But luck wasn't on his side. As it was, he did not wake up until the assistants were already arriving the next morning. And when he saw them, he panicked and began to run. Obviously, he was chased. The only way for Griffin to escape was taking off his clothes. So once more, he found himself invisible but naked in the cold January air. After this, he decided to get into a theatrical company to find clothes and also something that would hide the empty space above his shoulders. You see, when he was clothed, he looked like a headless man. Pretty intimidating, huh? So soon he arrived at Drury Lane, the centre of the theatre world. At a shop, he went upstairs and came out wearing bandages round his forehead, dark glasses, false nose, big bushy side whiskers and a large hat. And to escape without being seen, he attacked the shopkeeper from behind and he robbed him of all the money he could find. That's not a very nice thing to do, is it? I wonder what will happen to the scientist after this. Now that brings me to the end of this video. We do have more to read about Griffin's adventures. So do not miss the second part of this story. Until then, Tutormate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.